darkness. Um, so, so we're going to try to plan Shirim all the way through uh, Shavuot because, you know, it's like running a marathon. I know all of you are big marathon runners. I, I know that I'm not. But my younger brother who ran a marathon, so we were discussing a little bit what it's like to run a marathon. So in the beginning, it's a little bit exciting. You put on your headphones, you get into some music, and you're running, and you're all, you're all excited. The end is also pretty good because there's like an end in sight. So you got one mile to go, and, and you pump yourself up, and you go for that last mile. But, but the middle is really where it gets hard. The middle is, is where you have like many miles to go. You're, you're already tired. You're already feeling it in your legs. And, and how do you pull through the, the middle uh, 10 miles? So, and the way to do it is really is like little milestones. It's like, okay, I'm going to run to the building at the end that I could see that's like half a mile away. And when I, and when, so then you, you set yourself a little milestone. You're running there. You're all excited. You celebrate that excitement. I've made it. I, I got to that point. And, th and then you reset another milestone of, of, uh, of where you want to go. And that's really what we're going to try to do as a kahila. Uh, it seems that here in Israel, they're going to be slowly uh, loosening up the quarantines. But, you know, it's a process till all the kids get back to school. I know I have kids in different ages and, uh, and definitely our shul. It seems like it's going to be a little bit, of, uh, a little bit longer than most things uh, for us to open up. Um, and, therefore, uh, and therefore, it's going to be, uh, we're, we're preparing ourselves. I see that the audio is a little bit choppy. I'm sorry. It's, uh, maybe it's my internet connection or yours. We both need to have good internet connection for it to be clear. Um, so we're going to be preparing ourselves for full Hanasi Shul community programming, getting together every single day at five o'clock. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to try to get Rabbi Wine on uh, twice a week and myself on maybe twice a week. We're going to try to get uh, visitor rabbis to come join us. But every single day, we're going to keep to our five o'clock cheer. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, on top of that, I'm also going to be restarting my Gemara shear that I normally give Shabbos afternoon in Moed Kata. And we're going to be doing it uh, also over Zoom uh, every day at nine in the morning. It's going to be an early morning shear for those of you who, you, who want to join that cheer. It'll be probably from 9 to 9.45, 40, 45 minutes of a, of a Gemara Shir. We're going to get to do it daily from Sunday through Thursday, not Friday morning. And then uh, so this way we're going to have a Gemara Shir in the morning for, for whoever wants to join us. And we're going to have uh, our more interactive type of Shirim like we're, we have been doing at 5 o'clock. We're going to be keep on doing those uh, for going through all the way to Shavuot. Okay, so we're with us. If there's any questions... We are one Kehila. You can feel free to reach out to me, to myself, to, to Mark Zohar, to anybody else. And, and we continue to encourage everybody to reach out to one another. Um, we, are, we are ready on, on, uh, on Thursday. And uh, we're getting ready for, for Shabbos. And this Shabbos is Parsha Shmini. So I want to take uh, the next few moments just to discuss a little bit of Parsha Shmini to prepare us towards the, the parasha. So if you look in Perak Yud Aleph, in this week's parsha, we have the beginning of, uh, it's a concept that the Torah is teaching us about what to eat. Part of the Kedusha, part of being holy is not just how we act. Part of our action is what we eat and what we don't eat. And that's something that, that needs a little bit of, uh, of looking into. A lot of people ask, well, why is it so important what I eat? And why not, is it just important how I act and how I behave? Why, why, why is, is there such a concept of ma'achal So if you look at the Torah in Parak Yudalef, and I'll quote to you the Pasuk, Vaidaber Hashem al Moshe Vel Aaron Lemor Alehem. It's the only Pasuk in the Torah that appears like this. Dabru Bene Israel Lemor Zosachaya Shertochlu Mikola Behema Asher Allah Aretz. What's interesting about this parasha that is different than any other parasha in the Torah, this parasha, Hashem spoke not to Moshe to speak to the Jewish people, not just to Moshe and Aaron to speak to the Jewish people. Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron to teach the children of Aaron, Daber Alehem, teach the children of Aaron, the ones that are still alive after Nadav and Avihu were Nifter, to speak to Elazar and Itamar, and they should be the ones who teach Bnei Yisrael the mitzvah of Machalos Asuros, of what you are allowed to eat, and what you're not allowed to eat. And the first thing that struck me as a question is, why is this the mitzvah that is given to the children of Aaron in order for them to teach B'nai Yisrael? What did they merit that now they are becoming the teachers of this Torah? 
What did they do that is so special that they merited in becoming the teachers of this Torah? So Rashi right away tells us, Dabro Bnei Yisrael, et kulam yishva liyot shluchim ledibur ze, lefi shehishvu bedumiya, bedmima, vekiblu alayim gzerat hamakom ha'ava. We know that Nadav and Avi, Parsha Shmini, is the eighth day of the Yemei HaMiluim. It's the day that the Mishkan was erected. And on the day, the joyous day that the Mishkan was built was also a sad day. It was the day that Nadav and Avi went into Kodesh HaKodashim in a wrong way. We're not getting into what they did. Maybe we'll have to get into that as well. And they were Nifter on the joyous day of celebrating the inauguration of the new Mishkan. And we know that it says, Vayidom Aaron, that Aaron was silent. But not only was Aaron silent and he accepted upon himself this punishment in silence and not complaining, but also the children of Aaron accepted upon themselves this punishment in silence. And because of that, they were rewarded. In Aaron, there was a special parsha that was given only to Aaron and not to Moshe. That's the parsha of Shtuya Yain. And there's also a parsha that is given to the sons of Aaron, and that's this week's parsha of how to eat the kosher food and the not kosher food. And the question is, why specifically? This parsha is the parsha that they merited to teach the Jewish people of how to eat because they watch their mouth about how to speak. We see already a correlation that both has to do with our mouth. What's going on over here? That's question number one. But question number two, right in the beginning, it says, the rule of Bnei Yisrael, Lemor Zos HaChaya Asher Tochlu. This is the Chaya. Chaya means the animal, the wild, the not domesticated animal that you should eat. Mikol ha-behema asher arts from all of the behema, from all the domesticated animals. So the Pasuk starts off talking about chaya, about a wild animal that's not domesticated, and concludes with an animal which is called a behema, which is a domesticated animal. What is the switch? So Rashi points that as well. What does Rashi say? It says Rashi, Zosa chaya, lashon chayim, lefi Israel devukim bamakom vereuim liyot chayim. Because Am Yisrael is called alive, therefore Hashem decided, and we're considered alive, therefore Hashem made us refrain from Tumah, leave the Tumah, and He gave us the mitzvos. And to the nations of the world, He didn't give them the mitzvos. And then Rashi quotes from the Medrash, the famous Mashal, and Rashi says, imagine, and it's very apropos, he says there's a doctor that comes into the room, and there's two patients over there. And one of the patients, he tells them, listen, you have to go on a very strict diet. And the other patient, he tells them, you could eat whatever it is you want. And the patient that is told to go on a very strict diet, to become uh, a, a patient that goes on, he, he was told by the doctor to go on a very specific diet. He turns to the doctor and he says, doctor, it's not fair. How come to me, you gave a very specific diet? But to the other patient, you told him he could eat whatever he wants. So the doctor answers, my dear friend, your friend next to you in the hospital bed, unfortunately, his case is, is finished. There's nothing I could do to help him. And therefore I told him, just eat whatever it is you want because I can't help him anyways. But you, you are destined for life. You I could still fix, you I could still help. If you follow the strict diet, I will help you and you will become healthy. And that is the mushal that Rashi gives. And he says, therefore Hashem gives us a special dietary laws because Hashem says that we are destined for life for Chaim. Now the question is, why specifically this mitzvah? If we're destined for life, well, that's why Hashem gave us all of the mitzvahs. And yet this is the one that Rashi and that the Torah is using as an example. That's why it says, you should eat from this chaya. Why is it called chaya? Chaya, an animal that is, that is a wild animal, is considered, comes from the word chayim. Chaya, chayim. And that, the Torah is hinting to us that Hashem wants us to have a, a life full of life. And therefore, watch what you eat. Like that doctor who gives a strict diet to the patient who has a chance of living a long life. But Rashi says, and therefore he gave us the mitzvot. He gave us many mitzvot. Why specifically this mitzvot? There's something to be learned about the food that we bring into our mouth, that that is a specific mitzvah that gives us chayim, that gives us life, and that is a specific mitzvah that is given to the children of Aaron, that they are supposed to teach the Bnei Yisrael 
because they were silent when their brothers were nifter on the day of the inauguration of the Beis HaMikdash. And we have to understand what this means. If you look at the Rishonim, the Rishonim describe why is it that we need to eat Ma'achalos Asuris. And the Gemara in Yuma, Daflam Etes 39a, quotes, and it's brought down also in the Mesilis Yasharim, that eating inappropriate food is different than any other Avera. When we do an Avera, when we do something, even touch Tuma, it's a Tuma that is outside of us. But when we take something and we eat it, yes, you are what you eat. What you bring into your mouth, what you bring into your body actually breaks down and it enters your blood and that pumps into your heart and that gives energy to your physical body. Meaning the food that we bring into our body and we digest, whatever is garbage leaves the body. Whatever is nutrients that come from whatever it is we ate enter our physical body and they sustain our physicality and therefore they give fuel to our neshama as well and to our mind and to how we think and how we process things. And therefore the Ramban says, that the animals that are not kosher, Ramban al in this week's parsha says the animals that are not kosher are usually animals that also have a bad mida. They hunt other animals. They rip them apart while they're eating them. They are, those are the wild animals that we're not allowed to eat. And the animals that we are allowed to eat are generally animals that are chewing grass, that are not wild animals, that have, that are domesticated. And therefore, you are what you eat, what you intake into your mouth affects who you are. And therefore, there's a special mitzvah to watch the food that goes into our mouth. It is, number one, the Torah says that it brings the, it's not just an action of tuma that is outside of us, but rather it's taking something that is considered tameh, impure in the Torah, and bringing it into our body and becomes a part of our physical being. That's number one, and that's what the Ramban quotes. And that's also how the Mesil Sharm brings it down. Number two, what the Ramban is quoting, which is the Gemara and Yuma, is that it's metamtim our moach. It, because it becomes a part of who we are, it affects our mindset. And if we ate an animal that is not tahor, that has bad midos and bad character traits, therefore it affects us. In fact, they quote Rashi that says that you're not allowed to eat a chasida. Chasida is a type of word a type of bird. How do you say uh, chasida? I think it's an ostrich. It's, it's a bird that, that runs, that, that eats. And, and but why is it called chasida? Chasida is a very good name. Chasida is chesed. But says Rashi, it only does chesed with its friends. An animal that only does chesed with the like-minded animals is considered bad midos. That's not real chesed. Real chesed is when you're willing to do chesed with somebody who's different than you, and that's why we're not allowed to eat the chasida because even that has uh, a, uh, a negative, a negative uh, connotation. I, I'm hearing a comment over here that's called a stork. A stork is the name of a chasida, a type of ostrich, I guess. I don't know, it's like those cartoons. Beep, 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 beep. Um, it, it's a negative character trait. Because it's, it's, a, it's an, a bird that only does chesed with itself. So we see over here that the Rishonim, the Gemara is telling us something very important about the food that we eat. Number one, you are what you eat. It's not just doing an action of tuma or touching tuma. It's bringing it into our body. Number two, it's called that it's metamtim. It affects our way of thinking because it's something that goes into our mind. But there's even a step that is deeper. And that is understanding who we are as human beings. It says when Adam was created, so Hashem created us out of a physical form out of the ground. That's the physicality. And then he imbued within us a neshama. And it says, Vayhi adam lenefesh chaya. And the person was a living soul. Nefesh chaya. The word chaya is a living soul. It comes from the word chayim. Therefore, the Mekubalim explained that you know why it says over here, Zos this is the animal 
that you should eat, and it uses the word chaya because we are made out of a nefesh chaya, a living soul. See, every person really has, you can break it up into different parts, but it, we are built of three different parts. Number one, we have our body, our physical body. Now, our body is created in this world, and it stays in this world. We also have a neshama. A neshama is the spiritual uh, part of us. It's the part of us that has the emotions and the feelings and the understanding between right and wrong that each and every one of us understand. That comes from the olam ha-neshama, it's from the world of neshama, and it goes back to the olam ha-neshama when it's done its job over you. But in the middle, while we are here alive, what holds us together? That's called nefesh chayim a living soul. That's the coming together of the physical goof and the neshama, which is in our body. What holds it together is the nefesh chaya, is the living soul. And therefore, the food that we eat sustains our nefesh chaya. And Hashem says that Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish people, who have, who are my children, who their mission in this world is to live this world to the highest level, they need to be careful specifically with what they intake into their body because their body affects their neshama because of that nefesh, chaya, because of that living soul. You see, when Adam Arishon was created, he was infused with ruach through the nostrils, through the mouth. That is our power of speech, says Unkulus, that that is nefesh chaya, Unculus translates it to mean that it's not just a living soul, but it's a speaking soul. What makes us different than animals is our ability to speak. And therefore, the children of Aaron Akon, that they were able to guard their mouth, to watch their mouth, to not speak against God when something was going difficult and they didn't understand what was going on in the world. They were able to guard their mouth and use it in the right way. Hashem says, if they're able to watch what comes out of their mouth. I'm going to teach them the unique mitzvah that is unique and special to Am Yisrael of what goes in their mouth. Because this is the two, like we were saying by Leila Seder, this is the sign of life, is we have the kana and the veshet. I don't know how you call the two pipes, the, the esophagus and the trachea, I think. Those two pipes are the signs of life. When you shecht an animal, you need to make sure that you've shechted the rove of Shtei Simanim, because if an animal, in order to sh make sure that it's not alive, you have to make sure that we have, we got rid of the Kana and the Veshet. Those are the, the Simanim says the Zohar, those are the simon of whether we are alive or not. How we speak and how we eat. Those are the two human tendencies to sometimes not be so careful about. We like to eat whatever comes our way. We like to, even if we keep kosher, we like to eat what comes our way. The concept of eating kosher, of eating the kosher animals, is Hashem is telling us, watch what you intake into your mouth. And the concept of speaking, not speaking lush and hard, which is going to be the introduction to next week, Tazriya Metzorah, is watch what comes out of your mouth. For some reason, human beings, when it comes to their mouth, have less control than other mitzvos. We like to eat whatever it is we want to eat, even if we know it's not going to be healthy for us. We like to talk about other people, even though we get nothing out of it. And Hashem says, if you want to be alive, a tzaddik who's considered that he's alive and really live life to its fullest, a person needs to watch what goes into his mouth and what goes out of his mouth. And therefore, Bnei Aaron, the children of Aaron, who were so careful not to utter a word of resentment, a word of complaint, a word of, of going against Hashem. Hashem says, if they're so careful about what comes out of their mouth, which is one of the signs of life, of Vayipach Be'ab of Nishmas Chaim, that we are speaking species, that we have the power to speak, and they know how to speak the appropriate way, I'm going to give them specifically the mitzvah of also the other part of what makes us alive, our nefesh chaya, our chiyus, our being alive, our uniqueness, is what goes into your mouth. 
And what goes into your mouth affects you just as much as also what comes out of our mouth. They go together. They work in tandem. And therefore, this is the parshios that lead us up to the parsha of the mitzvah kedoshim tihiyu. We have what we're going to eat, and then we're going to have tazria metorah of what, how we're going to speak, and then we're going to have the mitzvah also of being kadosh, being a holy people, a holy nation, is the people that, as a prerequisite, we know how to use our mouth for good. And our mouth, this is really an avoda for us. I would say specifically during this time that we're stuck at home a lot, and specifically during this time that we just finished Pesach, is to be careful with what it is we eat. Obviously, we have what's in the Torah. The Torah is making sure that we're eating kosher food and not kosher food. But then on top of that, there's also the overall concept that is learned from eating kosher, which is just making sure that everything is under control, that we don't go too far in one direction. We don't go too far in another direction. We make sure that we have that perfect balance of using Hashem's world for the right reasons, of eating to sustain our guf, but why? So that we could use our neshama for doing tremendous things, so that we could have the koach and the energy to use our words to praise Hashem, to learn Torah, to call other people and give them strength. We could use our words and our mouth in so many different ways of bringing good to the world, and that's why we need to eat. We need to eat in order to have the energy so that we could use our words for the positive thing. This is what's unique about this parsha. The parsha of ma'achalos asurus, of making sure that we know what we eat, is here to teach us the lesson of what it means to be alive. And the signs of being alive are two signs. Number one, of what you bring into your mouth and you have to eat in order to live. And number two is what comes out of your mouth. You have to breathe in order to be alive, which is what comes out of your mouth, oxygen that comes into your mouth, carbon dioxide that comes out of your mouth, you need to make sure to be breathing. You need to make sure that what comes out of your mouth, the words that come out of your mouth are also words that are appropriate words. And the Gemara teaches us that, I was just learning now, I'm learning with my son now, Maseches uh, Chagiga. And in the second parak of Chagiga, we learn about Acher. Acher is uh, Elisha ben Avuya, who's a great Tana. A great Tana who went off the derch. He went into... He went, Nichnas La Pardes. He's one of the four who went into the Pardes. One of the Tanai who died. One of the Tanai lost his mind. Rabbi Akiva was the only one who went in and out. And, and Elisha ben Avuya went in and he, and he went off the derech. And the Gemara explains, Tosis over there brings down a whole variety of events that took place, why he went off the derech. Already when he was a baby at his bris mila, his father that decided he saw something phenomenal by the rabbis. And he said, oh, if the rabbis are so amazing, I want my son to have such honor and to reach such high level. So the reason why he was sent to learn was not for the right intentions. It was more for kavod. And Tosis over there brings down that one of, another thing that happened, and he saw a few cases, a lot of things happened that made him go off the derch. But he said one of the things that the Gemara quotes that made him go off the derch was that his mother was walking on Yom Kippur and she smelt some sort of avodazara food that was being burnt, and she couldn't control herself. And even though they whispered in her ear that it's not kosher and that it's Yom Kippur, but she couldn't control herself, so it was pikuach nefesh, and she ate it, even though she was mutter to eat it, but he said that affects a person. What you intake into your mouth can affect a person, even though it was mutter, but you should know that sometimes there are consequences even to what you're doing, even when it's mutter, even though it was pikuach nefesh, but because she was eating food of Avodah Zarah on Yom Kippur, it left a certain roshem, a small roshem. And then with all the other things that took place, it created that this big tana went off the derech and went off the derech in, in a very uh, deep way that he's considered acher, that we call him, you're a different person right now. And, uh, and, and that's one example that the Gemara gives us about how the food could even affect a person's development. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we're, we're in a time period right now, and this is, this is how I would like to conclude, like we said, that we're home. It's an, a time period to, to watch a little bit. You know, Baruch Hashem, we, we were able to get, get through a Pesach, Keil Chaso, but it's a reminder also of, of making sure that we're healthy, that we're exercising, and that we're eating right even when we're at home. And hopefully that gives us the right energy to use our mouth like the children of our own 
who guarded their mouth to use our mouth in an appropriate way to daven to Hashem, to learn Torah, to call people, to encourage people, to give compliments to people, to compliment our wives and our husbands, and uh, to use our mouth in good way, even though we're together in the same apartment for three weeks, four weeks without leaving, to make sure to, to use our words in an appropriate way as well, just like we use our, our mouth for intake the proper way, we also use our mouth for whatever comes out of our mouth in an appropriate way as well. This, these are my thoughts on Parsha Shmini. Uh, try not to make it too long during this, uh, during this Zoom call. But it, on the other hand, it's also opportunity for us to really to stop and to learn something. And it's really exciting for me to share these ideas with you. It's, it's great seeing uh, some new faces who joined us now after, after Pesach. It's great to see the Marcuses are here with us. And Riva Rothenberg, it's good to see you. It's, it's really, really amazing. Um, what I'm going to do right now is, is, uh, is undo the mute. And then if you want to mute yourself, you could mute yourself. But like we always do, it's an opportunity for you to share your thoughts, your feelings, your remarks, your questions, because this is really what we are. We are one big uh, kehila over here. And it's really a special schos to come. And like I've been saying until now, it's an opportunity for me. This Zoom call gives me the chiyu to prepare and to try to find inspiration during these uh, difficult times. So a big to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. It's a big pleasure. Thank you. It was beautiful. Thank you. Just on, on the last announcement, we're going to keep you posted. We're going to try to send out before Shabbos. We're going to do tomorrow a 5 o'clock pre-Shabbos uh, chizuk at 5 o'clock. Um, we're going to send out the YouTube channel and also the weekly uh, program for next week. Yes. Oh, here's Oriel. You want to say hi to everybody? Say hi to everybody. Nice to see you. How are you? Who did that? See everyone yeah. here in the chat? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, the Husses are here from England. Oh, um, one, one Friday morning, you had your um, class, and there was a gentleman there um, taping it, and you mentioned that it was he was taping it for a program called Torah Anytime. Yes. So I went on Torah Anytime, and I just re recommend it to anybody. It well, is yeah. amazing. Torah Anytime is one of the greatest uh, Torah resources in our generation. I highly recommend you can go to YU Torah. That's one tremendous resource, YUTorah.org. And also Torah Anytime. Um, if you look at Torah Anytime under my name, under author or a speaker's name, you'll find my shiurim. Uh, all of them are classes that, that were given in Hanasi um, and a lot of short clips as well. Uh, we did start also a YouTube channel for our show. We're going to get the Zoom calls up there. And now that I started this YouTube channel for the first time, I'm looking into YouTube for our shul. Maybe I'm going to open up an ETL Goldwich YouTube channel for all of my uh, shiurim and clips. We'll see. I'm, I'm learning a lot of digital things as we're going along here. <laughs> Is it possible to get the shiurim on um Torah anytime as opposed to YouTube because um, some people have a very high screen some people, on their filters and they I can't get YouTube. Right, I hear that. I just I'm not sure if we could if we should if all of our shirim are gonna go up on Torah anytime. But we'll try to post some more shirim on Torah anytime. Yes. Okay. Friends, this has been tremendous. Thank you so much. It's always great to see you. We will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. I'm going to send out a new link for pre-Shabbos Chizuk. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, hopefully, we're going to send out the Zmanim and at the Times. Uh, Moshe, I'm turning to you. Maybe we should send out a schedule of Zmanim, of when is a good time uh, to dive in and things like that. I think that's important to send we out have, as well. We have that. We, we have, have that? It. Okay, amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much uh, we'll to Moshe Lashinsky. At 11 o'clock by Juliet. Okay, amazing. Moshe says it was sent out. Moshe has been working around the clock for us. And uh, yeah, so has Mark and Ali, and we're really excited about this. I've been doubling though, with a million. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, no minion, but we should still dive in at the right time. <laughs> okay, Riva, it was great seeing you. It's great seeing the Steins over here, the marches, the Husses all the way from England. Stay safe. Tammy, you, good right. to see you again. Sylvia, nice to see you. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Oh, she's in the, she's in the time schedule. I'm not going to play a